everyone. Hey, welcome to a very special episode of um, uh, discussions with Holly McKay. Holly, I'm going to share this image real quick um, because this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, very exciting. Um, here's an image of uh, a book that you've got coming out, uh, The Dictator's Wife. And um, you can read more about it on the Substack. Um, and uh, again, and it's got pointers to where you can buy the book or pre-order it. But uh, I'm very excited to talk to you about this because I've been looking at this manuscript for a very long time now. And um, so without further ado, let's talk. Holly, so you're finally going to put this book out. And I'm, I'm very, very excited. Uh, so like, t tell the viewers a little bit about it and what motivated it. Well, yes, it's been quite a long labor of love. Initially, I did this. Uh, this was in during sort of COVID times. So it was the beginning of 2021 before I moved back to Afghanistan. Um, I really just did it more as a kind of just a creative exercise um, in trying to get back to some of my roots. Of course, when I was young, I loved to write fiction and and I wanted to kind of get back into that. And I think there's so much you can learn from fiction writing um, in really having to not only be creative and innovate, but draw on those real life experiences and and show, don't tell. And there's all these sort of rules that that I think force you to be a better writer. And that's really why I did it. And I was always fascinated a little bit with dictators' wives and, and working in different places because they held such important roles um, in dictatorships around the world. But but the questions were always very mysterious. To what degree can they influence their spouse? To what degree are they um, participating in often war crimes or genocide? Or do they just turn a blind eye? So there are just there were so many questions I wanted to explore and, and fiction really seemed like a great way to do that. Um, and the book is really sort of an amalgamation of different places that I've experienced, um, you know, whether it's North Korea, whether it's the Assad regime in Syria, whether it's um, Putin in Russia. So looking at all these different elements. So I think when readers read it, they'll sort of uh, be able to pick up on a lot of different nuances and, and things they remember, even within the US, a uh, certain experience I've, I've kind of weaved in there. So it was an incredibly challenging um, sort of writing assignment if you will, self-inflicted writing assignment. Yeah, well, I, well, so um, what what I what I really found fascinating about it because I, I I saw this thing in manuscript form is uh, it's an example of of your writing uh, freed from the constraints of journalism, which has a very structured. Um, uh, set of rules, as you well know. I mean, you know, there there are guidelines and and editorial policies and stuff like that that go along with them. And even in your freelance mode, you know, you have to stick within that. And this freed you of all that. The, how was the freedom of actually writing fiction? Yeah, I mean, it was freedom. On one hand, was fabulous, but freedom on the other hand is incredibly intimidating and scary because, as I said, you. You have to really go into your mind. And, and I think people have this idea of fiction being super easy to write. And it's actually not. I found it so much more challenging than nonfiction because nonfiction, the story's there. It's just a matter of how I put it together and word it and ask the right questions. But this, I really had to, to go into my brain. And I um, be, and it being a psychological thriller, there were so many elements and so many twists and so many things that had to add up. So no matter how many times I went through those original draft manuscripts, there was always something where it's like, oh, that didn't line up. Am I telling too much? Am I not telling enough? Are the hints too strong? Are they not enough? So many things and then so many characters and so much of what you do as fiction is character. So you really have to build these characters that people are going to want to know about. And that's even probably more important than the plot itself. So that to me was just it was it was really challenging and and I was grateful for for some great editors at, at DAP that sort of pointed me in a right direction in the beginning and, and pointed out a lot of the the errors but yeah it's if, <laughs> I have a whole new respect for fiction writers just purely based on it being challenging and and even though I was writing a lot about things I knew about um just having everything line up the way that I wanted to that 
that was hard. Yeah, I bet. Well, I mean, you know, um, and I know it was hard uh, because, um, well, you complained a lot about it while you were putting the manuscript together, especially the first couple of drafts. Um, yeah, there were many know. drafts of this one. I mean, I'd write it and think it was good. And then I would go back and read it again a week later and be, oh, my goodness, this is terrible. Um, you know, I was much more self-critical, I think, with this than with the nonfiction. But I think what's special about fiction is it gives people an insight into places and cultures. And and even in this case, it, it being a made up sort of Middle Eastern island um, in uh, called Tukana. And I think it gives people an insight. but it can teach you about things without being so directly in your face. And that's what's special about fiction is there is so much education to be gleaned from it, um, but we can sort of entertain at the same time. Yeah. So, um, and so these characters have a lot of depth to them uh, that, that I think people will discover as they read the book. Um, did you write it so that people would fall in love with these characters or observe these characters? You know, what would because you know, an I author think has a lot of control over yeah, the emotional yeah. gravitas. I mean, there's always, you have to write characters that people are going to relate to, to whatever degree, whether they love them or hate them, but they can certainly see where they're going. Um, and I think that is the point. And, and with the protagonist, uh, Anna, the first person um, who ends up being a dictator's wife and, and has a very convoluted backstory, I think, you know, as I was bringing her to life, there are parts of her that you really feel for and other parts where you're so angry at her. So I think that's, um, it's just, a, it's it's a little bit of self-reflection of ourselves. Of course, there's parts of us that we're proud of and we love, and there are parts of us that we can get very critical of. And and, and when we look back at things we've done, um, be very judgmental toward it and, and even angry at times. So I think, she was a, very much a roller coaster of a journey because I had to bring her to the forefront as a as a as a first person, and then the people around her. I think there are parts where we can feel that compassion um, and understand why people do what they do, but then the other part of it being absolutely wanting to hate them, and I think that's the complexity of human relationships. Yeah, well, it certainly is. Uh, has all the elements of what makes for a good story. And I am, you know, so uh, it will be interesting when uh, uh, people finally get the book to get their reaction to it. I think it'll be very positive. I mean, I, I of all the books that you've written that, that I've gotten a look at manuscripts of, this is the one, uh, as you know, I was just like passionately, oh, you got to publish this thing. This is, this is really, really good. And um, it basically because it of the complexity of the character development the that is in it where you know in real life you when you write about people the character you know they're they're already whatever character they are you're just reporting on who they are here you get mm. to expand and dive so much deeper into the what makes them do what they do um when does the book come out uh and and uh it because it's in uh pre it's in yeah pre it's available right? for pre-order so please go to hollymckay.com slash books and that will give you all the options there to um to click on to to find whatever platform works for you we can go direct to the publisher uh datbooks.com you can also get it through amazon or target or barnes and noble um and the book will come out on june 10th so yeah i look forward to that being released and hopefully there will be more in the series fingers crossed oh yeah okay very good well um yeah fingers crossed uh for me too because i um uh, i could i confess i'm an anna fan uh after mm -hmm. uh, even even in manuscript form so um and i've always been a fan of your um the the way you spin stories off the journalistic path which up to now um, in 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 many instances, only your friends have seen your your um your you know your live editorial of of yeah. what it can look like, and I think this will add uh, another facet to the jewel that uh, of of your uh, base of work and and uh, overall contribution to um, now literature in addition to journalism. So thanks, Holly, and um, we look forward to seeing the book when it comes out. Thank you. And I think 
first and foremost, I've always been a writer. When people ask me what I do, I, I say that I'm a writer, probably more so than being a journalist. Um, and that really goes to the core of of what I do. It it is about writing, and and journalism is is one avenue of that. But I think, um, yeah, good writing still matters. And and people talk about AI and ChatGPT, but but nobody could ever replace real experience. And that's where being on the ground, accumulating um, the experiences that I have, and and being able to sort of flesh those out. That's where that feels very important to me. So please check it out and thank you for your support. There you go. And uh, ChatGPT's got nothing on you, my friend. <laughs> thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Dennis.